My wife F48 has been cheating on me M41 while neglecting our three children. Hi all, I am 41 just need to tell someone about this. I don't have anyone near me, and I feel like if I write it all out, then maybe it can clear my head. This will be long, but I am putting it out there because maybe if I get it written, then it will make sense to me. So, I married my wife F48, let's call her May, in March of 2008. We met at a party through a mutual friend. She had graduated from a community college working as a paralegal, and I was finishing grad school for biomechanical engineering. We hit it off right away, and within a few months, we decided to officially start dating. May was great. She was pretty, smart, kind, and would give the shirt off her back if that meant that someone else would be warm. She has one sister that is important to this entire thing, I will call her Jane F43. Jane and May were not very close throughout their childhood, but they became closer as they grew older. When May and I had dated for a year, there was a conflict with her landlord and she had 30 days to leave her apartment. I obviously did not want her to be homeless, so we decided to move in together. Things were great. One thing I admired is how simple May wanted our life. Things were early, but we were seriously dating. We talked about kids, about moving to a different part of the country, what we wanted in life, and it was like we both checked off all the boxes. When I finished my graduate degree, I proposed to May and she said yes. At this point, we had been dating for close to four years. Both our families were thrilled, and we ended up having a small wedding, saving most of our funds for the future. My parents paid for half the wedding, I only have one brother who remains unmarried but with a spouse so they wanted us to have an actual wedding. It was really fun, and it was one of the best days in my life. After our wedding, we decided that we wanted to have kids. Additionally, I got a job with a big company which forced us to move about 14 hours away from where we met. This was very hard on May because she really loved her family, and she was used to having them right there when she needed them. However, we had talked about this prior to getting married, and if the right opportunity presented itself, then we would take it. And this was that opportunity. So, we moved down to a southern city in the US with a great school district and relatively moderate housing prices. That is why we didn't have such an extravagant wedding because we put a down payment down on a house. It was weird having a house and this huge job but May and I took it in stride. One thing about my work is that I am required to go on business trips. At first, it was for one to two days a week. However, as I progressed my way through the ladder, it soon became five-day trips. From Monday morning to Friday evening, I felt bad because I knew it was difficult on May to have her husband away for so long, but I made sure we had constant contact, and when I got back, I wanted to make sure that I gave her all the dedication she deserved. Plus, the pay was really good for this job. I knew that if I could stick it out for a few years, we would have enough money to start looking into having kids. Well, things changed when May called me multiple times when I was at the airport, getting ready to drive back home after my work week. It was odd because she would typically only call once or twice, but she then texted me frantically telling me that she needed me home ASAP. I asked her what was wrong, but she said to get there when I could. I flew out of the airport, and what was typically an hour drive was closer to 30 minutes. My heart was beating so badly out of my chest, and I was worried that something bad had happened. When I got back home, I flew through the door and it was completely dark. I started screaming for May but it was completely quiet for a few seconds. Until the lights came on and May was holding a cake with a simple plus symbol on it. I looked at her and was confused. What is this? I asked, and then it dawned on me. I asked her if she was pregnant and she said yes. We hugged, cried, and were so happy to finally be parents. We hadn't been trying but we also wouldn't mind if we had children. From then the next four years were an absolute whirlwind. We had three beautiful daughters, each one being about 18 months apart from one another. Things started to become crazy, with having little children and my work continuing to pick up. I tried my best to be attentive and lessen my workload to help care for my children. What I did was make it so my trips were actually in town so I didn't have to travel. I would start early in the day, helping May wake the kids, getting them ready. And before I would leave, I would ensure that they were packed, ready for preschool, and good to go. I would then come back in the evening, around 600 to have a home-cooked meal and spend time with my daughters before bed. As the years progressed and my daughters got older, my work required me to increase my business trip days, and it was now every week that I was away Monday to Friday night. I would keep in constant contact with my kids, talking to them every day. On the weekends, I would make sure that we would have either an activity with just the girls and I so may could get a break or all of us so we can have family bonding. The girls became more independent, and May was thinking of going back to school to get a certification in real estate, 
but we always held off on the idea until the girls were in their early teens. I encouraged May to go for it, but she also said that it was too much work with the girls, and being a full-time mom would make it difficult to get her certification. I didn't argue with her on it because what she was saying was absolutely true being a full-time mom was incredibly difficult, and maybe when the girls were teenagers or preteens, then May could get the certification. One evening, when the girls were in bed and May and I were in our room, she brought up the idea of moving. I was kind of surprised because I thought we both liked it where we were. Our girls grew up here, they had all their friends, all their interests, and they found this city as home. But May said that she was starting to feel suffocated and that this change would be the chance she could get to get her certification. She said it would be like a renewal. I told her that this would make my travel schedule even longer. Where we were was right near a major airport hub, so traveling was easy. But when I asked her where, she said she already knew where she wanted to be. It was right on the east coast, she said she found this house she liked, and maybe we could tour it on our next vacation to this area, in about two weeks. I was kind of surprised about how much in depth she already knew where to go and it was apparent she had been thinking about this for a while. I wanted to agree with her, but my thoughts were about our girls. Would it be fair for them to just suddenly uproot our lives and go to this place where they would have no friends or connections? Two weeks later, we went on vacation. The girls were enrolled in tennis academy sessions, as all of them were very dedicated and loved the sport. We had some free time and decided to go check out the place that May had looked at. Again, I was hesitant, but when we went to the area, May fell in love. Seeing her so happy made me wonder if moving was the right idea. I mean, we had vacationed at this place twice a year for eight odd years. May then grabbed my hands and looked at me saying that this was where she wanted to live. I told her that the houses were far out of our price range considering we have three almost pre-teen girls that have to get to college, but she said she knew a house that would be right on our budget. It had been on the market for eight months and was heavily discounted. There also was an open house the next day, so we went there, and May just about was head over heels for this house. And within two months, we had completely uprooted our lives and left. I thought we should have waited until the school year ended, but May was insistent to leave. We had talked to our girls, and they were fine with it. Though my youngest Lily F14 seemed to be taking the move really hard. I noticed at first at how quiet she was she said she was fine with moving, but I could see how difficult it was for her moving to a new school with only a couple weeks left to go. I sat down and talked with Lily and she admitted that she said it was fine to move, but she felt like May had forced her to say yes. I told her that what she was telling me wasn't okay, and that I understand her feelings and will talk to May about it. However, Lily said to not tell her because it would upset May. Respecting Lily's wishes, I didn't tell May, but there was something in my heart telling me that something was wrong. The school year ended and the girls were enrolled in a full-time tennis program within our neighborhood. Everything was right there. We lived in a gated community with a huge tennis center, multiple pools, and right outside was a named grocery store. The girls were in biking vicinity for everything, and it felt like everything was going great. However, I noticed that Lily and our middle daughter Abby F12 were starting to become more distant from May and I. We assumed it was because they were preteens and liked their freedom. May then said that she wanted to get certification, and I told her to go for it and that I would support her. Also, the girls were most independent, plus the classes were in the evening, so May would still be there for our girls when she left around 7 p.m. and got back when they were sleeping around 11 p.m. I didn't like the idea of leaving our girls alone for so long. But the area was very safe, and the girls had a neighbor right next door if anything happened. Things were going well until one weekend, when I was home in the afternoon making lunch, Lily got back home and didn't say hi to me. She had tears in her eyes and she went to her room, locking her door. I was majorly concerned and went to Lily's door and knocked on it, asking her what was wrong. But she just told me to leave her alone. I told her that if she wanted anything, she could go to my bedroom. After a few moments of silence, Lily unlocked her door and it was apparent she had been crying. She looked around and asked if mom was there, and I said no, that she was studying at the library her certification licensing exam was coming up. Lily wiped her tears and hugged me just crying. My heart ached and I just hugged her back, not knowing what to do. Only then did I really notice how small she had gotten. Lily was always a bit bigger in size despite doing lots of activities and eating regular and healthy meals. This summer, I noticed she had lost weight but now I was seeing just how much weight she had lost. It had me concerned but I wasn't sure what to say. I asked Lily what was wrong but when we released she just shook her head, said thank you, and closed the door. I was absolutely confused, unsure if this was just preteen emotions or if something was really wrong. My first instinct was to call May and ask her what to do, 
but I wanted to honor Lily's wishes and so I didn't call May. However, I soon became curious and went to our garage where there were medical documents sorted away. I went ahead and pulled out Lily's annual physical documents and noticed how drastically her weight had gone down. At 12 she was 5 feet 3 inches and 130 pounds and then at 14 she was 5 feet 4 inches and 110 pounds I knew something was really wrong, and something just didn't feel right. As I was putting documents away, my mind kept running. I went to the fridge and curiously checked the groceries we had in there. We had groceries, but I noticed that the stuff we had was entirely new. Obviously, with a family of five we had a lot of groceries, but everything was completely new, from the day before. I pushed it out of my mind, but I made a mental note about it. Over the next few weekends, I noticed that Lily became more withdrawn and our other girls were acting out more. They were still younger, but the tantrums were almost daily. It wasn't just tantrums, they were screaming matches and lots of slamming doors and hitting things. This hadn't happened until recently, and I noticed that Lily often had to break up the fights and would manage to calm down her sisters better than May or I suddenly. A few months ago, one morning, our youngest, June F10, woke up in agonizing pain and we were going to take her to the hospital. But May insisted that she will go with June, and I will stay home with our other two daughters so that when they got up, we could go to the ER and they wouldn't be panicked. I helped June to the car, and May drove off hurriedly. I went back indoors before I noticed that May had left her phone. This sounds like a bad movie, doesn't it? We had an open phone policy, and I was gonna look away before I saw a notification pop up. It was from her sister. At first I was going to walk away, but I checked the message and my whole world changed. Her sister had been warning May to stop the affair because if I found out, it would ruin everything. Of course I was confused, what just happened? Inclined, I scrolled back and looked in horror to see that May was admitting to her sister that she missed being with who we will call Derek and that he made her feel so much like a woman when they were together. Messages said that she couldn't wait for her library meetings with him and that she knew it was wrong, but she started to fall in love with him. Hurriedly, I went out other messages and looked for Derek, but there was no contact. I looked into a search bar and typed Derek and lo and behold, under a different alias named Jenny, there were nudes, intercorseting, and plans to meet up almost every evening of the week when I was away on business trips. I was so disgusted and I didn't know what to do. But logically I needed to ensure I had this contact so I wrote down the number and information and put the message screen back to her sister. Suddenly, this life I had thought I was leading was crumbling down. An affair. For how long? Was it just him? Was it intimate? Emotional? Have my girls seen him? So many questions running through my mind, and behind the anger, I felt blame. If I had spent more time with May, then she wouldn't have to chase another man. After 20 minutes, I woke up the girls and we all went to the ER. On the way, I got a call from the hospital asking if I was June's father and I said yes, and it turned out she had acute appendicitis and was in surgery. I didn't relay this to my girls who were already sleepy, and we just rode in silence with my thoughts and this whole thing. I couldn't be mad at the moment, I had to be there for June. Thankfully, June was okay and was allowed to go home after three days. I took off from work for the week and spent as much time with my girls as possible. May had her exam coming up and she would say goodbye to me every night at 630. She wanted to kiss me goodbye, but it was always painful when I knew that she kissed Derek with those same lips every night. On Thursday, when she left, Lily came out of her room and came to my room. She was tired and looked like she had been crying. I asked her what was wrong and she admitted to me that she had seen Derek before in our house. She said him by name. Lily had been thinking of telling me for some time but was always so scared. However, she was sick of it. Not just that, oh no there was so much I was missing. What Lily said to me was heart aching. She admitted to me that ever since she was five, she had to play mom. May apparently locked herself in her room all day and either slept or ate. There were periods where Lily wouldn't see May for up to three days at a time. Food would get so low that Lily would have to make three to four trips to the grocery store and back on her bike just to get a decent amount of groceries. She had been learning to cook but wasn't very good at it. Additionally, she felt like her mom never liked her. She said she had tried to talk to May on various occasions about depression symptoms, but her mom always said that what she was feeling was normal. Then, Lily said she was worried about her weight to May, and May said that Lily wasn't at her ideal body weight yet and she needed to continue restricting meals. Yes. You heard that right. She was telling Lily to have one meal a day that being lunch. Lily had tennis for 6 hours a day, biked close to 10 miles, swam for 2 hours, and then had to watch over her siblings. I was sick. I wanted to throw things, I wanted to scream at May, I wanted to divorce her and sue her and everything was so red. 
Lily said she hadn't told me because she was scared too. And God, everything now was making sense. I told Lily that this would be last time that may anything like that to her, and that if she wanted, I could put her into counseling to talk about her feelings. She begged me to not say anything or do anything or else it would ruin the family. She said that she would ruin the family. But I told her that this has gone too far. I told her I loved her and that I would make sure that she couldn't be hurt anymore. She asked me to promise her, and I did. It was when May got back that I wanted to tell her that I knew everything, but I decided to wait until the next day when the girls were, the day came and when the girls were gone I confronted May about the cheating. She denied it at first, saying that I was being ridiculous and that she would never cheat on me. However, I had prepared for this. I had messaged her sister prior to our discussion and her sister had admitted to me that she couldn't hide this any longer. I also had her boyfriend's number written down. When I asked May about the number, she denied it. But when I asked if I could put the phone number in the search bar for her phone, she hesitated greatly before giving her phone to me. I put in the number and the messages came up. Suddenly, May was crying, begging me to not leave her and that I was everything to her. She would end the affair, that it was only because I was gone so much and she had to take care of the children. I then screamed at her asking her about the days she locked herself in her room. Where the girls had to ask friends for rides to their schools two of them didn't have buses because she couldn't get out of bed. I asked her why she didn't get Lily consoling, why Lily had to be the mom that she wasn't. May was crying and said that if I left her, she would take her life. To say I was surprised would be an understatement. May suddenly went to the kitchen and grabbed a large knife, putting it to her throat and threatening to take her life right then and there. I pleaded for her to put the knife away, but she said she would only do that if I forgave her. She said she would stop the affair and be a better mother, but I had to forgive her to do so. I said I forgave her and then she cried into my shirt saying thank you. This was two weeks ago. Now, I am not sure what to do. I have started looking into divorce attorneys and alternate places to go with my girls. My business schedule is so busy that it will be incredibly difficult for me to get remote work, but I have emailed my boss explaining my situation. The issue I am having is that all our family is over 16 hours away. I haven't told my parents. I haven't told anyone. Besides Reddit now. I want to divorce May and take my daughters. I have found a cheap two-bedroom condo that is on sale I sent out an email asking the landlord how much it would be to move in as soon as possible. I can't mess with our accounts at the moment or else May will become suspicious. It's so difficult having to do this because May has reminded me that I forgave her and that we should move on for the sake of the girls. She apparently broke it off with Derek but I think she's with him. I feel stuck between a rock and a hard place. I hope to update when my boss gets back to me. Sorry if this was a rant ramble. I have no one to share this with in real life, and I feel like my world is falling apart. I am home right now taking a few remote days so I can watch over my daughter. I don't know what it is like being a single dad I will have to fight tooth and nail to make sure that I even get my girls. May can easily concoct a story saying that I was abusive and that she should have the girls because I am often away on work and am not willing to co-parent with her. I don't know. Thanks for listening.